and welcome back to the Football Terrace. We're here in Doha, another action-packed morning show for you. We're going to be looking ahead at the third-place playoff. Chelsea now have a brand-new technical, technical fuck-you director in. Let's do that again. Yeah. Welcome back to the Football Terrace. We're still here in Doha, another action-packed morning show for you. We'll be looking ahead at the third-place playoff between Morocco and Croatia. Chelsea have now got a brand new technical director joining them from RB Leipzig. Reports are that Milinkovic Savic has changed his mind and wants to join Arsenal Football Club. We're taking a look at that. Maguire, will his career be salvaged at Manchester United? One of the best journalists out there thinks that that is now possible. And we're also going to be taking a look at the FIFA World Cup team of the tournament for you today as well. I'm joined as ever by KJ. How are you, mate? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. But before we start, I have, a, I have something to say. I want to say happy birthday to Terry. It's his birthday today. He's out here making content for you all. And uh, yeah, we appreciate everything that you've done um, for us as a, as a community, as a, as a football channel. Uh, the opportunities that you've given, not just myself, but many people um, whether it be in the UK, around the world, letting them call in, letting them come into the studio, giving them some of their first breaks in the football content world. I just want to say thank you and I uh, hope you have a wonderful birthday. 37 years young and uh, yeah, the, the, the hair making that beautiful comeback as well. We'd love to see it. <laughs> my, thank you. My question is, uh, where's my fucking present? But oh, hey, listen. <laughs> Me being here is, is, is a present enough. You know what I mean? I get you. I, 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 I appreciate that. And I am working on my birthday because all top Gs work on their birthday. No top G takes their birthday off. That's uh, all I'm going to say. No all one... right, Terry Tate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But um, lots to delve into today. First big story is, according to some mainstream media outlets, Gareth Southgate will remain as England manager... What are you saying, KJ? I, I, I want to say I'm shocked, but I'm not. Like, we, we kind of have a feeling that this was going to happen anyway. Um, but in the headline, it also mentioned that one of the reasons why he's doing it is to save the backlash of the FA from selecting a new manager. And for me, that just shows the weakness of not just Gareth Southgate, but also the FA. They are perfectly married together like they it's a perfect relationship because mm. both of them are as cowardly as each other if you're if you're a, a a serious football association you should not care about what people will say if you get rid of a manager who has not achieved the goal that you want them to achieve you mm. shouldn't have to be worried about it you should be like right i'm sorry thank you gareth for everything you've done shake your hand We've been, it's been a lovely time but we need to do something different and the fact that South Gelf, Southgate is allowing himself to be a puppet and a pawn in this whole game, man has no self-respect, man. He should have been like, nah, but this, like, well, I'm, he, I'm leaving. And this is it. This shows the weakness of the FA. Mm -hmm. It isn't a decision to keep Gareth Southgate. If you come out and you back it and you're like, listen, we're not, we don't want him to go. There's a new big deal. We think you're the right man. We back you. I have more respect for that because you've got some, there's some conviction behind your decision. Mm -hmm. The way the FA are going about it and Southgate to boot, it's like, you know those couples that stay together even though they should break up just because oh, I can't be bothered to sort through who's going to get what. Let's just stay together and sleep in separate rooms. It's a madness. It's a, it's a yeah. terrible mistake and it leads to unhappiness in the future. And that's what this decision is going to do. It's going to, there's going to come a breaking point from the majority of fans with the manager. And it will undo stuff that he's done because we, the way we work as human beings is sometimes we forget the good times when things get really bad. And yeah. I, I, I'm worried about that happening because Southgate has given us some really good moments over the past three to four years. There's no doubt. But it looks like he's going to stay. It looks like we've got him for at least the next Euros, maybe the next World Cup as well. Viewers, what do you think about mm. Southgate staying? Kind of keeping with the England theme as well today, though. Dean Jones, one of the best in the business. The, the, our guy, Arkid Dean. The Arkid Dean, the Dean machine. He has stated that there is now a, a genuine chance for Harry Maguire to turn his career around at Man United. His performances at the World Cup show, he's still got it in him. And the Ten Hag is going to look to you know, bring that confidence back out of him. United have been looking at buying a new centre-back, and it is, it is felt 
that if they can get Maguire back to his highest possible level, he may still be a backup to Varane and Lissandro. Of course, he's got to be. Yeah. Best two centre-backs in world football right now in their respective positions. But what's your thoughts on Maguire staying on as the kind of backup to those two? Uh, I was hoping for that World Cup tax to kick in. Someone be like, yeah, there is a player with Maguire. Let's, keep, let, let's get him and get him in and show the world what he's about. I did not want that to be Man United doing that. Um, but Ten Hag clearly is thinking long game. He's clearly thinking, right, trying to get hit. this guy gone in the January is a bit too difficult. Let's bring him back in. Let's see if we can get that confidence up. And then hopefully, um, this is me saying from hope, hopefully in the summer he's like, right, we've got you in a place where you can now get a move. Go and do so. Um, but yeah... We'll just have to wait and see with Harry Maguire because we've seen it before. England performance is absolutely perfect. Comes back to Man United and he's the same sluggish, Problems. slow player. So, yeah, well, hopefully he comes back with the confidence to, to be an asset for us. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I can hope for, really. Look, I, I agree. I, look, I think this is Dean's reporting what he's being told. Yeah. Doesn't mean what Dean's being told is what the club will follow through with. And if you know Dean like we do, mm. clubs have told him one thing. Journalists' jobs are to tell us what they're being told. It's our jobs to use our brains and decide whether or not we think that, that will happen or not. You know, I don't. That, that's the way I look at what journalists do. They give us the information they're being told, and you decipher what's being said. Yeah. It isn't on the journalist whether a club, an agent, a player is lying, unless that journalist says this is happening 100%. Yeah. Because they're then giving you a, a personal endorsement as opposed to, I've heard something. Yeah. I think Man United are putting out this story because they're trying to do what you've said, maintain that World Cup tax. If the world thinks that he's got a great chance of getting back into the Man United team, if you're a club that's looking at him, it's going to give, you, it's going to give Man United the leeway and the ability to push for that price to go up. Yeah. If they know Man United don't want him, it makes it a hard sell. It's like the Jao Felix situation with Arsenal. Everybody's talking about how Atty are going to get a massive price. How? You want him out and he wants to leave. It's impossible for you to get this big 120, 130 million pound asking price. It's a fugazi. It's yeah. never going to happen. N never in the history of sales as a company wanted to sell a product, wanted to sell an asset, desperate to get rid of it. And it gone from the, the, the original asking price. It's like, a, it's like, you know, like when things are out of season or it's the winter and the summer clothes go on sale. Yeah. You don't pay full price. No, no one's paying full price for him. So with Maguire, you've got to work it in reverse. You've got to convince people that you want him and he's got a future. So the money goes up. So if you're a United fan, you want Maguire out. I wouldn't be too panicky at this particular moment in time. But that's just me personally. Make sure like buttons are being hit, by the way. Make sure you're downloading the Hitch app now. World Cup predictor, predictor, the final game is tomorrow, so we'll be using it for that. Make sure you get it done. Brilliant quizzes, brilliant social polls on there as well. And remember, you get paid for using it. Legit. You earn coins, which you can transfer via PayPal into proper mahoney. Proper mahoney. Do you know what I mean? And use your football skills and knowledge to pay the bills. Easy. Get it done now. Scan that QR code. Chelsea. Okay. Chelsea scare me. Do they? What, what, no, what doesn't scare you? So we've seen Arsenal, Chelsea, Wasps Wasp also scare you. Um, what doesn't scare you, Terry? That's, that's the real question here. Um, I've got, what, what does scare me? A few, a few things scare me. Is that there's a look that Jess gives me that scares me. Oh, yeah. That, that, that definitely happens a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, what doesn't scare me? Look, Chelsea scare me because I said the same thing in the summer. This is not new. I think Chelsea Football Club and the top B are building some. And they might be going about it in a very different way, with a very different approach. Apologies for the flyover of the helicopter there. They're doing stuff today in Qatar. They're doing business out here. We've got construction next door. We've got helicopters. But we're still here. We're still doing our thing. Like, my view is kind of simple. I think they're building something, and I think they're building something that's got legs. Um, Christopher uh, Vivelle is coming in from RB Leipzig as a technical director. He's very well thought of. Brilliant, brilliant at orchestrating the operation at Leipzig, which has led to them signing so many brilliantly talented players as, a, as an organization. Now, I'm seeing Chelsea fans just, I, I saw um, Kai, he's been on the, the terrace many times, and he tweeted something today about this and about the links to players Chelsea have got. Yeah. And the, the young players. And he's like, why are we acting like, a, why are we going after mid table 
targets because Brighton were also interested. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, imagine you signed Casado for 4.5 mil. Imagine you were the club that found Basuma. Mm-hmm. Leipzig are the guys that, 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 that discovered the, you know, Harlem before anybody was talking about him. Mane before anybody was talking about him. And multiple other players. Benjamin Shisko before anybody else was talking about him. Yeah. I would love my club to have that approach because Chelsea are still going to go and buy big, which they did in the summer. They're still going to go out and try and buy the Zhao Felixes, the Vlahovic's of this world. But they're also going out there and they're trying to find those players before they become 50, 70, 90, 110 million pound players. And this is why Chelsea worry me. Not now, not this season, but so many football fans. Football fans, when their club's being slagged off, they always talk long term, long term, long term. What we've done before, what we're going to do in the future. When it comes to like attacking a rival, no, no, we can only focus on what's happening in this particular moment. And in this particular moment, Chelsea aren't great. But I do believe the long-term plan, people like Christopher Vervel coming in, they're probably going to get a sporting director as well to run the club, to take that little bit away from Todd B. Yeah. And it might take another couple of years, but Chelsea are going to build something very substantial and very hard to compete with. Therefore, I'm scared of what they're trying to do. Yeah, I think... We, we joke about Todd B, like Todd B and all of that. Like, but I think he actually is a smart man. He's a smart owner. He realises that football isn't going in a certain direction. He realises the just doing the buying the, the star names, the big names with big money doesn't work as well anymore. It, there is meticulous planning, meticulous preparation that goes into creating a successful team. And Man City are the example of that. They, before they got Pep, they brought in the people that worked with Pep behind the scenes to create this juggernaut. And I think Todd B's seen that. It's like, right, I will take the, the short-term pain for the long-term gain. And I, I think it will, you'll see the, see the fruits of their labor, maybe not even next season, but the season after that and after that and after that. So, Mate, so, yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you, 100% concur. Imagine RB Leipzig, like how, they're good, right? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. a good team. They, they, they've beaten some good sides. They do well in the Bundesliga but they're not on the top echelon because they don't actually have the ability right now to keep hold of their star players. Imagine having RB Leipzig's model, mm. but Chelsea's pool and, and, and money to sign stars and keep the youngsters you buy. Imagine adding like Chelsea's buying ability to the RB Leipzig project and combining the two, burning the candle at both ends, all you're going to generate is major success. Chelsea fans have just got to get their head around the idea of a different approach yeah. in 2022. But look, I personally think it's very good. Viewers, what do you think? Chelsea fans especially. The technical director is now in. What comes next? Arsenal. Arsenal, Arsenal. Uh, I, love, I love that on, on Twitter. It makes me laugh. I, I saw it for about two weeks and I didn't want to ask what it was because I didn't want to seem uncool. I, was like, yeah. I don't know what that is. That's like, <laughs> Arsenal. Milinkovic Savic, three days running. Yeah. Three days running, this story has been trending. Mm -hmm. What has now been reported, and I want to get this information right, it, this is what I was this is what I saw earlier. It says here that Milinkovic Savic is now seriously considering um, Arsenal Football Club um, for a fair proposal in January. Milinkovic Savic uh, was linked with the move to the Premier League for many years now, and Arsenal reportedly made an approach to the player in the summer. It is now believed that Milinkovic Savic is, uh, is more than open to joining Arsenal and would be willing to agree to join to a fair offer, for a fair offer. So it's essentially now being said that Milinkovic Savic will agree to join Arsenal if they pay him the right amount of money. He wants to be part of the Arsenal project after, pretend, after having said no in the summer. This is just an interesting story because every single day it's coming back and it's from more journalists, more information is coming out. Do you feel like this one is starting to pick up more pace? Like, as I say, three days running, three variations of the story, but yeah. more information each time. What's your thoughts on Savage to Arsenal? It's, it's a bit more serious than I initially thought when I first heard it a couple of days ago. I was like, yo, typical SMS links because he's linked to everybody and he just never goes anywhere. But... I feel like with his contract running down and him definitely not wanting to sign a new one, I, I believe this is actually, he is definitely pushing for a move now. Him and his agent are out there. And if Arsenal aren't interested, then why not try and go for them? You know what I mean? If, mm. if they are looking to bolster their squad, why not offer and say, look, look 
we see what you're trying to do. Let, I want to be a part of that. We saw always see Mudrik um, basically do the same thing, but a bit more because he's, they've been wanting him for a while. But, but I feel like there's, there is actually something more in it than I first uh, thought. And if, uh, sorry, not Chelsea, if Arsenal do actually sign him as well, they are building a fantastic, fantastic squad that will compete on all fronts. And that is not a sight that I like to see as a rival. I'm just like, yo, they're doing their business properly. They're doing it early. Um, and you can only do, you can only but commend them for, for what they're doing. Yeah, look, the only thing I look at is the other day when Jess and I did the show, we spoke about Vlahovic. He essentially said no. Should you go back for a player that said no? It feels like in the summer, Milinkovic Savic says no. If these stories are true, and we're just yeah. going to go by the premise that these stories are true, that Milinkovic Savic says no, Arsenal are now in a much better position than anybody barring me predicted them to be in this year. <laughs> and now he wants to onboard the ship. And Arsenal just need to be careful if this story is true, that they don't start allowing people to jump on board because they're doing well. I, this is my view in life. Yeah. I don't want people to want to work with me after they see me succeed. I want your buy-in to my vision in the beginning. Those are the people that I put my faith in because those are the yeah. people that will work hard for me. I'm not a massive fan of Johnny Come Lately's. I don't like people that jump on bandwagons mm. and then try and take... I, I, there's, there's something about it that just doesn't sit but, right with me. But is it a bandwagon when you've seen a team go 8th, 8th, 5th? And what they're doing this season is amazing, but was it not maybe a, a more of a calculated weight to it, see it, if it's, and, it's and that's, possible? You're right, and that's a great yeah. challenge, and that's what Arsenal need to be sure on. Yeah. Was it a, oh, I really wanted to, but I just wasn't sure? Or was it a, psh, Arsenal, no? And so I'm like, oh, actually, you ever seen those videos they make where a guy asks someone for their number? He's like, no, I've got a boyfriend. And then she sees him get into like a Ferrari. And suddenly yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. maybe we could go for a drink. <laughs> ah! I, I just, I ain't about our life. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. If you don't want to be with me when I'm on the way up, you're not going to be with me when I'm at the top. Yeah. Like, as simple and as straightforward as that for me. Before we do our teams of the tournament, we also want to take a look at Croatia versus Morocco. Predict that game. Of course, with the hit jap. Let me screen grab this for you all. Just let it load. There, wait. There we go. So, we all know we want Morocco to win this. Yes. But what are we going with, my friend? Croatia win or Morocco win? No, we, we go with what we want today. Morocco Today's win. Vibes. Regular time or extra time? Regular time, Regular baby. time. Yeah, we don't need that hangover. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to say ha half time, draw or Morocco winning? Or, or Croatia? Um, no, Morocco winning. Morocco winning at half time. The match will be running regular time. We, we, we've already yep. selected that one. How many goal? When will the first goal be scored? Um, 20th. 20th minute. Ooh, early. Early doors. Yes. Early doors. Uh, how will the first goal be scored? Open play kicking, a header, free kick or penalty, own goal or no goal? Free kick, Hakim Ziyech. Let's go. I like that. Uh, total goals from both teams combined in regular time. Three. Three goals. A total corner during regular time. Yo, I'm telling you, it's about to max it out, Terry. Max it out. Max it out. 13 plus. Yellow cards. Max it out again. Max it out <laughs> again. Okay. Any red cards? Screw it. Yes. Someone's yes. getting sent off today. It's a third place playoff, but I don't care. Someone's getting it. I'm going to go yes, both teams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there we go. We've submitted our answers in there, people. Let us know what you're predicting for that game. That is locked in and that is done. I'm being attacked <laughs> by flies Oy. more than ever today. They're actually landing on my nose today. <laughs> it's crazy. It must be the cream I've got on. I don't know. I must be attracted to it. Um, oh, you moisturize. Hey, you moisturize. I do moisturize. Hey, come on, let's go. No, no ashiness over here, brother. Mm -mm. Um, team of the tournament. Woo. Viewers, we want to know your team of the tournament. The eleven you would pick. What's yours, Cage? And you can do whatever formation you want as well. But go on, Cage. What's yours, I'm my going friend? Four, three, three. I'm going all the way through it. Go for it. Yep. In nets, Livkovic. Right back, Hakimi. Centre backs, Gavardio, and Sice. Left back, Teo Hernandez. In the midfield, Safian Amberbat. Antoine Griezmann and Luka Modric. Up front, you have Kylian Mbappe on the left, Lionel Messi on the right, 
and Olivier Giroud down the middle. That is my team of the tournament, people. Let's go. That's a good team, and it's, very, it's fairly similar to mine, to be fair. I'm going 4-3-3 three, three as well. I've gone for Hugo Lloris in goal. Mm. He's been a little bit understated in this tournament, but I think he's made some brilliant, brilliant saves, especially against England, that, that essentially kept yeah. France in that game. Right back, Hakimi has to be. My centre-back pairing, I've gone for Rafael Varane, led his nation to the back-to-back -back mm. finals. And next to him, I am torn, but I'm going to go for Saiz because I think he played above himself at this tournament and he, okay. and he absolutely brilliant. And then played with a bad leg, killed it. Left back, same as you, Theo Hernandez. He's been, the only game where he, he, he struggled was against Bakayo Saka, but Bakayo Saka cooked him. <laughs> DM, all tournament until he went out, I was looking at Casemiro, but Amrabat just Beautiful. outstanding. Antoine Griezmann in the middle, same as yourself. And I nearly went for Luka Modric, but I went for someone that I did think had a slightly better tournament. I know what you're going to say. Bruno Fernandes. Oh, crap. I was not expecting that, people. Um, bias. Bruno Fernandes is in my team of the Bruno tournament. Bruno Bias. 110%. Level of creativity, level of goals. <laughs> you're just at the back looking at him. Like... He, even in the, even in the <laughs> game where his team went out, he performed. He set the chances up. He, 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 cut, he was cutting them apart. Well, I wish I wish you... Hey. I wish you could see Jess right now. She's saying shameless to you. But I've gone for a slightly different attack to you. So yeah. I've gone for a, a narrow front two with a player in just behind. Yeah. So the player in just behind is going to be Enzo Fernandez. And I got it right first got time. got it right first time. <laughs> right well en Enzo's going to be there with a two prong attack that would split. So Mbappe on the left yeah. and Lionel Messi on the on the right hand side. So that so is who I'd go with. Essentially, you've gone for a four four two diamonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah essentially, yeah. Yeah. With, with, yeah, that's what I've done. And okay. look, I, I had to en en Enzo had to be in that team, Bruno had to be in that team, Amrabat and, and Griezmann did. And there's no way we can leave out Messi and Mbappe, who are, in my opinion, fighting it out yeah. in tomorrow's final 100%. for player of the tournament. Really. Yeah. Um, the Varane show. I was thinking about it. I was. But then I was like, you know what? Let's give it to the guys that be he missed, I think, one game or maybe two games. I don't know. But um, let's give it to the guys I think have been playing all tournament and doing super well. It's a good shout. Uh, and then, um, what was it? Bruno. Bro, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, no. I, tell you, I, I, get, no, I get it. Bruno Fernandes, this tournament has been very, very good. He's probably, he was Portugal's best player. But there's something about it where it's just like, again, in that moment of need mm -hmm. to get through to the semi-finals against a Morocco team that obviously we, we all appreciate but they really should be beaten there wasn't that wasn't I, a I final get that, but, but, but Theo Hernandez would have been everybody's left back at the tournament if England knocked him out in the quarters he was still the best left back at this tournament and I don't think even in the, 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 the semi-final games obviously the, the world would have been different if they weren't in it yeah. unless Luke Shaw as an example Killed it in the semis and killed it in a final. Yeah. Theo Hernandez would have gone out in the quarterfinals and been everybody's left back, in in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so from even if if Brazil would have won the penalty shootout against Croatia, yeah, your goalie might have still been everybody's goalkeeper at the tournament because the amount yeah. of saves he's done up to that point. So for me, Bruno and his team went out in the quarterfinals, but I don't think Bruno let up in that game. I think Bruno was the best attacking midfielder in the tournament up until that point. And I think he has enough credit in the bank to be, be, be in that team. And I, I thought he was fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with my team viewers. I want to know what your teams are. Make sure you leave your comments below. Make sure you hit the like and the share button. But until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll be seeing you all again soon. Bye-bye.